Yeah, so I just have a couple PowerPoint slides. I just wanted to start off with this. Yeah, so when I was a much younger person and would stay overnight with my grandmother, she um, was a big Robert Schuller fan. Do you remember um, Minister Robert Schuller from California, Garden Grove, California, had the Crystal Cathedral. And he said, tough times last, but um, tough times never last, but tough people do. And so I think we have to remember that, that we can get through adversity, right? With some help from each other. Um, a resource page. So this was compiled. Um, so NDSU extension. So the, the point of this is just to share some resources that we have gathered. Um, extension has a page with a number of resources on it for COVID-19. So I'll just click on that quickly. So um, obviously I work in communities, with communities, but there are a number of resources here um, for NDSU Extension on economics, um, obviously food and sanitizing and working with older adults and also um, economics, youth and family. So um, feel free to share those resources with, with folks you work with or with your community members. Um, the next one is Zoom, and I have shared that in the chat pod. And again, um, Nicole Smith, a colleague of ours, developed this. And we are all learning the finer points of Zoom, obviously. We had a little hiccup this morning, so thanks for working with us. So this is what this looks like. And you should be able to click on that and save that onto your own computer. I've shared that in the chat pod. So good things here. Okay. So the next resource, um, so I just, um, I took a screenshot. So my son uses this and I have started to use this. It's called Slack and it's a way to um, basically, um, it's a, for texting, but to group text. So this is what, what his looks like. You can set up groups to text. Jody? Yeah. Can you make your screen larger? That is, or, or open it in full PowerPoint mode. You got it. Let's so better. Ellen? Uh, now we're seeing the notes on the next slide. I, I don't know. We just need to see one page at a time. <laughs> Sorry. No, how's that? <laughs> I know we're all learning this together. Sorry. All right, sorry. Anyway, I, so it's probably not very prominent, obviously, but I just wanted to share this. Um, you know, we're all learning alternative methods to communicate and to hold, hold meetings and communicate with each other. Um, so Slack is one of that one way to um, communicate via text group. Um, Zoom is obviously one we've used a lot. And that's why I've included that. But Google Duo is also another one. I'm not necessarily endorsing any of these. I just want you to be aware that there are opportunities to continue to get together. Um, I also, on this resource sheet, have included North Dakota Attorney General. And I do that. Uh, many of you that have gone through our lead local program, we talk about open meeting laws and record laws. And... Um, we just can't lose sight of those things. And um, there is a page on here for open meeting requirements during COVID-19 national emergency. And I've taken a couple calls from township officers wanting to know how to conduct those meetings. And so there is some information here in regards to meeting notice and requirements. So just um, be cognizant of those and that you're following those rules. I'm not sure why not Emily is on um, from Department of Commerce, but I have also listed Department North Dakota Department of Commerce. Um, I know that they are 
wanting to do an inventory. So you have, they want to know how businesses are being affected by COVID-19. Um, so if you are a business owner or know of someone who has been affected by that, they would like to have an inventory. It's a short survey you can um, access off of their website. Hey, Jody, so, and can I say please, something please. about that real yes. quick? Yes, please do, Emily. Um, great, thank you. So this is a statewide survey, and we're, we're wanting to know how the coronavirus pandemic is impacting all types of businesses or organizations. And um, so far, we have about 500 responses, and it's only been open for, I don't know, 12 hours, I guess maybe closer to 20. Um, but we're going to have this open for about another week and then we're going to close it. And then we're going to reopen the survey in 30 days because we hope to be able to see some trends and get um, responses right now, kind of at the beginning and then also later on. So if anybody um, is able to share this with local businesses within the next week, that would be ideal because then we're going to reopen it later on. Thank you for that. I really appreciate the explanation. So obviously there are resources on that site as well. And I, um, I heard Michelle Comer speak yesterday about some of the resources through the CARES Act. And I suspect there'll be more coming with that. So some things to keep in mind there. Um, also, there's a resource here. Um, the next one is um, SBA and then the Jamestown Regional Center for Entrepreneurship. We'll be hosting a webinar tomorrow, as actually a Zoom meeting. Um, some folks from SBA will be explaining some of the resources. So if you care to take that in, it might be an opportunity. So I'll just minimize some of these things, clean this up. So are you seeing the slide that has some screenshots? Okay, so uh, I really wanted to, um, I guess I've been so impressed by the things I've seen on social media about how creative businesses are becoming. Um, and that's what crisis does, I suppose. Um, and so I just took some screenshots. One, the community of Garrison has been doing some pretty interesting things and I'll call on Michaela in a minute if you're willing to share some of the things that your business community is doing and how they, they are supporting each other. And then the next one is from the White Maid Restaurant in Napoleon. And I thought this was pretty great. They included pictures of Nefla soup and they ran out before, this was at 1151 on Friday. So they are getting pretty creative with social media. And then the Fireside Restaurant in Ellendale, I included that. It's kind of a, an icon in the community. And when Peggy, she's the proprietor of that restaurant, when she heard that the, the governor um, was closing um, restaurants, asking restaurants to close, she said, as much as I want to throw in the towel, I can't and won't give this to my best shot. And then she posted that she was so overwhelmed with the support the community has shown. And I think there are stories like this all over our state. And so um, we have to be creative and support each other. And so Michaela, I'm just gonna minimize this. Would you introduce yourself and um, tell people what's going on in Garrison? All right, can you hear me? Can you hear me? I can. All right, so I'm Michaela Bayless. I'm from the Garrison Convention and Visitors Bureau. Um, and obviously, we're a small community of uh, less than that, 50, around that 1,500. Um, and so we've really just tried to uh, do a lot more um, shop local. I mean, shop local is always important, but I think now more than ever, um, we have to just be creative and trying to get that, um, just to try to get that in people's brains that, you know, we need to help our local businesses, else they're going to um, fail, especially because of the pandemic. So. Um, we've tried to do, I'd like to take a lot of credit for a lot of the things that we're doing on social media, um, but I've actually gotten a lot of great resources from um, a chamber of professionals group I'm a part of, and it's um, comprised of people from all over the United States who are all dealing with this same pandemic problem. Um, and so they've, uh, they've lended a lot of ideas on creative ways um, to engage people through social media and, and remember, remind them that, uh, you know, shopping local is really important. Um, and so 
you know, obviously Jody showed um, the shop uh, or support local bingo. I'm um, just trying to encourage people um, to support our local businesses that support, that spend an enormous amount of money supporting our local school organizations, um, our events, um, bring in the volunteers, everything that makes a small community so great um, that now they need our help. So, um, and obviously all of the ways that are on that support local bingo um, are encouraging them, them to do things that they can obviously do from a, a distance, um, you know, by still abiding by that social distancing. And so, you know, it's, it's using those social media to get on like a page, you know, write a great comment, um, do a great review on Google, um, you know, share something that's, you know, you're grateful for um, in your local community, um, buy a gift card to use later. Um, you know, it all, it all, go, all goes down to, you know, instead of canceling your appointments, reschedule. Um, you know, it's, it's so important right now that, um, you know, we continue trying to support those businesses as much as we can. Um, and so that's kind of what we've been doing. Um, I know one big thing that, uh, you know, we've seen a lot of businesses try to be creative. We've seen some that have just kind of unfortunately thrown in the towel, towel and don't really want to be super creative. So they just close down and, and that's unfortunate, but we've had a lot of businesses come up with some creative ideas um, on ways to make this work. Um, Cause obviously I'm sure in a lot of small communities, um, the grocery store is about the only uh, business that's really, uh, really skyrocketing right now. I know our business, our grocery store said their, um, their sales are up by over 50%. So, I mean, a huge increase for our grocery store, but the other businesses are obviously um, seeing the hurt from the pandemic. So um, again, trying to work together, be creative. Um, you know, we've kind of tried to be the main um, area to try to share um, any COVID-19 updates as far as businesses closing or going to curbside only, limited hours, um, whatever it might be, just trying to give them one resource to go to, one page um, where everything's in one place that they can see kind of what's happening um, in response to the COVID-19. So um, that's what we've been kind of doing. Another um, unique thing besides our shop local campaigns that we've been trying to do, um, and, and maybe somebody can take this back to their community too, is in the holiday season, we do a Christmas cash promotion through our chamber. Um, basically what that is, is it's our local we we work with our local bank um which it's locally owned so it's a lot easier to work with and so our we offer monopoly money um is basically what it is and you can go to the bank and you can apply for an interest-free loan up to so much so many dollars um you get basically monopoly money fake mon monopoly money that you can spend at any of the local businesses that are participating um and then the businesses end up actually paying the interest um so they lose five percent out of every dollar um you know, when they redeem that Christmas cash, when they go to deposit it. Um, that's usually doing, during our holiday season to try to obviously keep those dollars local um, while people are shopping for Christmas gifts. Um, and also to help them out on a time of need where, you know, there's, there's a lot of expenses coming in for buying Christmas gifts. Um, but I know one thing that's talked in our community is trying to implement that program again during this time. Um, you know, as we see the pandemic hopefully coming to a little bit more of a closed end, um, you know, is implementing a uh, care um, cash program where we would again offer um, those interest-free loans to our community to spend local. Um, and we've actually had our economic development jump on board to say they would pay the interest um, so that the businesses get that full dollar value for that money that um, is being spent. So um, I know that's in the works right now and we're hoping that that will encourage and allow more people to keep those dollars local, to buy those bigger items if they need it, um, instead of holding off, because um, our businesses truly need it. So I know that's one of the programs that, um, you know, we're currently working on that. We've taken a, a program that's always been successful to us and try to implement it um, in the sense of the, the pandemic and trying to help out. Is there anything, Jody, that else that you wanted me to go over? I appreciate you sharing that. And again, that's from uh, Michaela from Garrison. Does anybody have any questions for her? I have a question. So, Michaela, my name is Cindy, and I'm um, NDSU Extension in Sargent County. So those businesses that have, like you said, kind of thrown in the towel, um, does that mean that they just, they, they closed themselves totally and aren't even trying anything at all? And if so, 
you know, our community members, do you know, on an individual basis approaching that person because individually, you know, how is their well-being and their, you know, mental and emotional health and things like that? Um, so one of them that, um, you know, I'm one of them that I'm referring to would be um, one of our local restaurants who obviously when the, the governor made the executive order to um, shut down dine in, um, you know, dining in for restaurants, um, you know, instead of, I think it's just the way he is. And so I, I don't think it's, I mean, you know, he, he's not really a team player all the time. So I think it comes stems from that. But, um, you know, it's unfortunate because there's a lot of ways even with the executive order, um, we've seen a lot of restaurants come up with a lot of creative ways to still still continue their business. Um, you know, obviously they're seeing a decline in business a little bit, but you know, we've seen others that have skyrocketed as much as they can during a pandemic and not allowing, um, you know, people to be able to dine in. And so unfortunately, I think it's, for him especially, I think it is mainly just, you know, not being a team player, which is unfortunate. Um, but our other business has stepped in, or our other restaurant, our other two restaurants have stepped in, and they've, um, you know, they've obviously offered that delivery service um, to go as curbside, um, all of that, and I think that they've seen a lot of great things too. Right, and I I understand that. I just am worried about you know a person like that on a personal level because if they're, you know, not like like you'll say not a team player or whatever, but um, just if they're personally tapped out and they don't have the energy or the, you know, they're stuck um, to do, to move forward with their business, you know, that could be a, a cry for help, you know, that they're, they've disappeared, you know what I'm saying? No, no, I exactly know what you're saying. And we, and somebody should probably approach him and just find out. And, and honestly, I'm surprised that he wasn't open because before the executive order was made, um, you know, I know I, I discussed with somebody that had talked to him um, and he had came up with all these ideas of ways he could, um, you know, still continue his business even with this. And so I, I don't know if it's lack of employees, you know, I, I, I don't know what, what the case is, but I do. Yeah, that definitely is a good point to, try to reach out to him and see, um, you know, if there's something we can do to help to get him, you know, to open. Right. Not, not shaming at all, just concern on a personal level. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. So um, really, this is just an opportunity to share some resources or examples of what's going well in your community, or if you have a question to ask, um, if you have some good examples. I know they're out there. Um, is anybody else willing to share something that's working? Jody, I just wanted to mention that um, Karen posted in the chat a okay. farm survey for small and beginning farmers. So if that applies to you or someone you know, to, or if Karen can speak to it, but I just wanted to make everyone aware of that. Hi, thanks, Marie. This is Karen Ahrens. Um, I'm a member of the board of the North Dakota Local Food Development Alliance. And uh, uh, last week or so, um, Farms Organization posted a, a survey wanting to hear from small farmers, especially about their needs. And I know Stephanie right now is in the midst of a big grant application, which is why she's not on the phone. Um, but if you know of small farmers and farms is attempting to understand better their needs and gather that on that survey. And then while this has been going on, I just connected with Emily Brown at North Dakota Commerce so that we can facilitate sharing those um, survey results with the Department of Commerce. So thanks for holding this um, webinar Zoom meeting so that we can connect to each other and to the resources and tools that we all have available. I also shared uh, earlier in the chat box the uh, Creating a Hunger-Free North Dakota Coalition um, website on our homepage. Um, we've listed some easy links for people to be able to find food resources in the state. Uh, the list of uh, food pantries from the Great Plains Food Bank by county. Um, how you apply for SNAP, TANF, and Medicaid at the Department of Human Services. Um, information about applying for the WIC program. So uh, thanks everyone. Thank you, Karen. So I see Emily from Jamestown Chamber has posted um, a resource or a link to resources there. Emily, 
Would you mind saying a couple things about those resources if you would mind? I'm totally putting you on the spot here, but. I see. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. I see that she posted, I don't have a microphone, so. Oh, I see yeah. that, okay. Yeah. Thank, that's all right, thank you for posting that. Um, is there anyone else? I, I'm curious, I saw Lori Dietz was on here. Lori, do you have a microphone? Are you willing to just say hello? Yes, I'm here, good morning. Good morning. Um, what we've been doing in Carrington, or what I've been doing working from home, because I have asthma and trying to limit exposure, I am feeling uh, isolated because <laughs> everybody knows what a social person I am. But um, what we've been doing is um, every Monday uh, I go on the radio anyway. And um, so we've been doing that remotely and talking about the latest. And then um, Tuesdays I go on another radio station and talk about things. Our big thing right now is Facebook. Um, trying to gather and share and then encouraging businesses to message me or text me or let me know what are you sharing so I don't miss it. And then um, listening, of course, to a lot of these webinars and chats and things to try to um, keep up with what's happening across the state. Um, and then sharing any information from public health, of course, and from our hospital, um, things like that. Our, I think our restaurants um, right away switched over to um, take out and, and that type of thing. So I think that's been going pretty good. Our grocery store is going, you know, bonkers over there. Um, you know, I feel like we're okay. I think it's, you know, trying to share information about um, employers or businesses, what they need to look forward to that's coming with the stimulus is important. Um, I did contact all our lenders and ask them, uh, you know, what's your plan? What can I tell our businesses? What are you telling our businesses? And then pass that on. Um, we are really encouraging um, business people to contact their local lender first, and then they'll guide them through the process because I had some businesses ask about SBA and they got on there and they were confused and it was red tape. And so we're really encouraging local people to go to their local lender first. And that might be maybe a little better for them um, in trying to maneuver through the system. Um, but yeah, if anybody has questions. Great, thanks. And that was Lori from Carrington. So a couple things coming up in the chat. So Melanie bauer Ducart is from USGA Rural Development and she just had to get off the call, um, just reminding us about their programs. Um, keep in mind too, Sonia, Thank you for posting that. NDSU Extension has a number of mental health resources, so please take advantage of those. Um, reach out to your local Extension office if you need to access those or would like to access those for media release or to even post off your own Facebook page. So Sony has an, included a resource on that or a link, so thank you for that. And Emily again from Jamestown has posted some other resources for small business. Small business, okay, small business loan guide. Great, thank you, Emily. Hey, Jody, this is Emily Brown. Can I share um, a couple of things that I've heard about? Yes, and then Cody um, from Wishick wants to say something too. So yes, please, Emily and then Cody, thank you. Okay, perfect. So um, there are a group of downtowners organizations that have a weekly call every Monday. Um, and it's, you know, generally the larger metro areas, but they're open to having any other organizations join. They do a great job of sharing tips from across the state. So some of the cool things that I heard about this week are um, the city of Bismarck worked with the downtowners to create downtown pickup zones um, in our downtown that are areas where businesses that are still open and are doing takeout or um, curbside pickup, like for retail, just designated areas for people to park and pick up their items. Um, they worked with the local beer or beverage distributor to, to print and grommet the signs. And they also put big signs up in all of the businesses that say um, open for takeout. Some of them are doing virtual retail events. So they're working with their downtown retailers um, where they'll have 30 minutes for each retailer to present through Facebook Live. Um, and then they're selling things through Facebook or through Shopify as they're doing these events. Um, 
the city of Grand Forks is considering doing a drive-in movie night, which is a great way to get people out, but still maintain social distancing requirements. Um, the city of Williston, their theater, even though they can't show movies, they actually had a popcorn and soda takeout where they had people lined up for like six blocks in their cars, um, driving up, picking up popcorn and taking it home for a at-home movie night. A lot of the downtowners organizations are encouraging businesses to look at ways that they could set up subscription based models where then they would be able to send one coffee a day or something. And that's a way to get a slightly more reliable source of revenue. Um, one other great resource, Scott Meyer at NDSU, the NICE Center, he has um, 13 students who will provide free assistance to any business in North Dakota, helping them set up an online a website, uh, moving their, their business operations online, helping them figure out how to sell products online. And that's completely free. And they can do that from anywhere from 24 to 48 hours. Emily, can um, I say something yeah. about that? So I did include the NICE Center link on the resource page. Thank you for mentioning that. I meant to and failed to. But I learned that um, so they will, the NICE Center will help businesses set up that e-commerce platform um, by using Shopify, just as you had mentioned. And right now, Shopify has a 90-day a free trial. So keep that in mind. If businesses are thinking about that, now is a great time to take advantage of that. And again, as Emily said, students um, are available to help set that up. So thank you. Sorry to interrupt. Oh, that's perfect. I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, the city of Devil's Lake has done a scavenger hunt downtown. I assume people will be in their cars, um, but it's just a way to kind of drive around, interact with local businesses, even if you can't be, be close to them in person. Um, you know, they were talking about doing a, a parade where people would get in their cars and drive through the downtown and then honk at all the businesses and the business people could come out and wave. Um, just things to keep morale up and make sure that local businesses feel connected to the people in their community. Um, and then the last one is the city of Grand Forks has been doing industry specific listening sessions. Um, and they've had hundreds of people participate, but they're kind of like this, just a Zoom meeting, and then anybody can get on um, all the local businesses in particular industries and share, ask questions, um, brainstorm together. Um, oh, one last one that I do wanna share, the city of Hankinson, they have like three restaurants, and as soon as this situation started becoming a bigger deal for them, the three owners collaborated and decided that each day only one of them would be serving takeout, and they would all direct all of the customers to that one business. Um, so that's a great way to see more collaboration rather than competition. I love that. That's great. Thanks, Emily. Good resources out there. People are being awfully creative, that's for sure. Okay, so uh, Cody, you had a couple comments you wanted to share. So Cody is in a wish. Why don't you introduce yourself and then go ahead. Sure, just to be sure, is my, can you hear me? I can hear you. Awesome. Um, so, yep, I'm the director at the Wishick Job Development Authority. Also have a license to practice law, so I've been going over this CARES Act a lot and trying to get the details on it for the Paycheck Protection Program. Um, it is, no matter how it shakes out, it's going to be a very generous program. There is a lot of conflicting information about it from the SBA's website. Uh, it says the loan is forgivable for amounts that are spent on rent, mortgage interest, utilities, all of that. The text of the actual act says it's only forgivable for uh, outstanding debt obligations before March 1st. Um, so just a basic example of conflicting information. I really encourage everybody to make sure they're on every lesson that they can about this Paycheck Protection Program. Um, I have reached out to the local lenders, Security State Bank and FCCU, just to make sure that um, they're aware of this. It is such a new program. Uh, they don't have a lot of guidance on it yet. Um, but if you're in a position to sort of be on top of your banks and local lenders and continue to, you know, push them to get more information on it, I just, I, I can't stress enough. We're going to be in North Dakota. We're all going to complain about how, uh, the fat cat Washington gets there share of $500 billion. Um, this is the local little guy's chance to get 
not that high and just really 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 encourage everybody if you're in a position to help your businesses by knowing more about this please please do great thanks cody anybody have any questions for cody follow up with that so trish had oh, a, um, and yeah go ahead a uh, little thing, we did a procession, a uh, car procession through Wishick on Sunday, and uh, it was our most popular Facebook post that we've ever had, including sauerkraut day post. So, so uh, Jody, I see a couple of things in the chat. Uh, Kelly has uh, some information from the Red Cross. Uh, Hi, Marie. Oh, hey, um, there she is. I'm here. Uh, everybody, hopefully everybody can hear me. So my name is Kelly Richardson. I'm based in Dickinson. I actually own a marketing and communications company. And after I lend some stuff that's going on with the Red Cross, I'd like to circle back on some stuff that we're advising our restaurant clients um, right now. But I am on the board of directors for the Red Cross. Um, I also serve as a public affairs um, volunteer. And we are reminding everybody that we're still responding in our communities throughout North Dakota to um, disasters and emergencies. So if there is house fires, um, we've retrained all of our volunteers throughout the state. Um, we have uh, kind of new protocols in place to make sure it's safe for them to go out. If it's not, um, we'll do a virtual response, but we still have cash assistance for people that need hotel rooms and food assistance and clothing and shelter and everything um, people would need in the, in the event of an emergency. Um, the other thing that's going on with the Red Cross is we are also planning forward and looking at um, spring flooding. So we're doing a lot of work in preparation for that. So we kind of are juggling two things. Um, and we've also canceled, unfortunately, over 400 blood drives now in North Dakota. Um, last numbers I saw on Friday, we were down about 12,000 units for the state. Um, there have been a couple of blood drives in Fargo. There's one in Watford City um, through a private hospital, I believe the first or second week of April. Um, but if you are healthy and you can give blood, it's safe. Everybody's following protocols um, for sanitation and keeping people a great distance apart. Um, so we are asking that people still donate blood because the last thing we want to do is um, have a low blood supply in North Dakota and throughout the United States. Um, and if you are looking to do something with extra time, we're also still taking, you know, we're always in need of volunteers and there's a lot of things that can be done virtually. So um, if you have time to spare, we can use you. Um, Circling back to restaurants, and this kind of applies to all businesses, we've been working with businesses in North Dakota and our out-of-state clients the last few weeks to get everybody operating online and to integrate things. Um, what we're advising is first, um, especially with gyms, fitness centers, and restaurants that utilize technology already in their businesses, so if they have a system for ordering or they have a system for signing up with classes, what we're advising them to do is first check with those technology platforms to see what solutions they have rather than spending the money or more importantly, spending the time on bringing in a new platform. Um, it's there a lot of times there's a quick plugin that's available that people might not know about. And it's easier to add that into your existing system then try to reinvent the wheel. Um, the other more, most important thing is that we're also advising clients right now is to walk your talk. If you are telling people that you're sanitizing and you're following safe solutions for those businesses that are still open, and even the restaurants that are, that are doing takeout, um, make sure that you're following protocols in your communications. If you're using video communications, um, if you're doing curbside pickup, making sure you're wearing gloves, not filming videos that have your entire staff within a few feet of each other. Um, a lot of our restaurant clients have taken strides internally, not to bring back a ton of employees, but to just bring back what they need so they can keep them six feet apart in the restaurant. So it's important that 
businesses that are staying up open realize that they are leaders. They're setting a precedent. They're in the eye of the community and they really, they really need to follow the protocols, show that they're following protocols and set good examples for other businesses. Excellent point. Thank you for sharing those resources. Um, those of us who work in leadership development, I, and many of you have participated in our RLD program, Rural Leadership, North Dakota, Lead Local, and many of uh, many others. And if we ever, if our communities need leaders, it's now. Um, you're equipped and um, step step up. Um, do what you can for your community. So Trish had posted that Foreman will be having a blood drive in April, April 7th, um, Carrington on April 20th. So do what you can with that. Um, so I had some questions about how do I access these links. So I did repost the resources page and I'm not sure. To me, it says network disconnect. So are people seeing that? In the chat pod, I wanna make sure you get those. I can email them out to everyone that we've gotten, um, that we included in our email list too. And if you're not seeing those, Department of Health has posted some guidelines for food establishments. Okay, thank you. Yep, Lindy, I will email those. Unless someone has some, um, I'm gonna share my screen again. One thing I noticed, um, just to pop in here. Ellen yes, Lori. Emily Bivens out of Jamestown asked if any chambers had applied for SBA loans. Just wondering, you know, it's a good um, topic to maybe talk about amongst ourselves. Has anyone thought about that? And that was Lori from Carrington. Has anyone else, she's asking about those SBA loans. Has anyone applied for those? Lori again just probably a little early in the game but um, yeah Emily if you're still listening we maybe should um, organize something um, and see what chambers are doing to um, survive <laughs> the virus as well <clears throat> um, I was on a call yesterday with CVVs and the state tourism department and um, that is very bleak um, that particularly particular sector gets their uh, funding from lodging tax and of course with the vacancies and empty hotels everywhere it's going to be very um, bleak for 2020 for funds for those organizations okay thank you laurie so if anybody has any suggestions, I'm not sure why that file is not showing. Sorry. Jody, could we put that on our um, coronavirus link on page for NDSU, our resource page? Yes, that's a great idea. I'll make a note to do that. So we'll list it on uh, our COVID-19 resource page on NDSU extension. Um, Again, I just encourage you to go there for a number of resources and links to other agencies that we work with. Just trying to read in the chat here. Are there other questions or concerns? Jody, this is Eric Keltner. Yes, Eric, where, and where are you from? I'm with uh, Grand Forks. I'm with the Small Business Administration. Oh, great, thank you. Um, certainly chambers, if they are a 501c um, organization, they, they are eligible to apply for a disaster loan. Okay. So something. Um, I just wanted to say, I think Cody mentioned it, that with um, right now we do have our disaster loans out there. There is a um, uh, one part of it where you can get $10,000 in a very quick, it's, sort of, it's a, an advance. And that, that is available on the disaster portal. If you go to the sba.gov, it's in the yellow right on top. Um, there will be more guidelines coming out for the Paycheck uh, Protection Program, which uh, is going to offer some similar things. And some of that may be forgiven. We're trying to be very careful. Right now, we don't have all of the programs. And hopefully by tomorrow, I'm going to be working with Jamestown tomorrow to do 
that webinar, <clears throat> and I hope that we have some some good solid information that we can share at that time. But we will be getting the information out as soon as we can. So I'm sorry. I, so you'll be presenting um, with Jamestown Entrepreneurs. You're the presenter for that. Yes. Awesome. Okay. Great. Thank you. Appreciate that. Okay, a number of you will be on that. I'm trying to, I'm going to email this to Marie and see if maybe you can post the resource page. We'll, we will get it posted on the extension site. Sure, go ahead. Uh, I'll sure try, um, Jody. And I also wanted in the chat, I know Molly put uh, a, a link up from North Carolina <laughs> some resources. Um, and then there was a comment about Slack. Oh, um, is it Shelly? Marco Polo is another opportunity for a free video type of chat. Uh, I know WhatsApp is another one that's out there. So yes. a lot of different ways to connect. Rebecca Voxer is another good app for communicating. Okay. Voice and text. Great. What's another one? Group meet. Okay. My Gen Z son is here over my shoulder advising me. <laughs> okay. Okay, just reading these, sorry. Um, Google Hangouts, that's another one. Okay. Um, so I, I don't know if I see Dr. Johnson out of Lisbon. I see your, your picture. I want to put you on the spot. If you don't want to say anything, you don't have to. I'm just curious how how school is progressing in Lisbon. If you're willing to say a few things, technology working okay, and everyone's adjusting. I'll I'll be careful. We kicked off our distance learning on Monday, um, the 23rd. So we crash course for about five days. Uh, flipping our whole school into a whole new program. Our, our plans were now approved by the governor's office, uh, and now it's time to assess the damage to find out exactly where we're at. Um, so we're working on that this week. I've also been in communication with Extension, Jan from Extension, uh, finding ways in which uh, um, NDSU can help out in those areas in the community. So that's been a really good support for us here. Um, sometimes you need to go to those systems that were earlier developed, uh, such as Extension. They have a presence in all 53 counties in the state and is a valuable resource. And many times educators forget that they can get some great uh, resources from extension so i i've been pushing that out um we're also working hard um with the center of distance ed they've been around since 1935 they also have been doing distance learning for a long time so uh, i think once again they're a valuable resource uh, most of us are in what you would call information overload uh, where we're gathering so much and a lot of times they come with offers of four free months and then they're going to automatically uh, charge your credit card. So I'd advise people to be a little careful on those. Um, I would also be very, very careful that you don't promote something that may not necessarily meet those people's needs in the area of handicapped accessibility. So there is a lot of stuff out there that may not meet those requirements. And so you have to be careful. Um, and then of course, the other one that we deal with, we are a public school. So the open public records laws and um, FERPA are two things that we have to really watch closely. So, um, we're in that process right now of seeing where we're at. We, uh, as a state organizations, are meeting on a daily basis. 
Uh, I've just been asked by Dr. Alan Pratt, who is the uh, executive director of the National Rural Education Association, to do a podcast with his organization on Friday. And uh, we're kind of all in the same boat. Um, I did find a resource yesterday. I could post it on here. It's from Kansas State. Uh, and it's a little app that goes right on your phone. And so everything you wanted to know is all in one spot. Kansas State has done a really nice job of that. And I talked to the gentleman that designed it, and he says it's an open source, so he'll he'll let anybody that wants to use it use it. So I'll post it over in the chat. With that, I'll just be quiet. I appreciate your input. Thank you, Dr. Johnson. He's from the Lisbon School. And uh, as you know, our schools are integral parts of our communities, and we need to continue to support them. And thank you for um, sharing that information. Appreciate that. I see Marie has posted the resource page that I referenced. It appears that you can download that. Um, Andrea Nelson posted some things about community foundations. Don't forget about those organizations in your community. Many, many communities across the state do have a community foundation. Um, it appears that some of those are starting to open some relief funds to support nonprofit organizations. That's great to see. Um, Trish has mentioned something about cyber threats. Okay, great. That's important to keep in mind too. All right, so we, we have about five minutes left. If anybody has any comments, just to wrap up here. Um, so Rebecca Undem out of Oaks, I'm gonna call you out here. So you had mentioned about my PowerPoint. We'll see if we'll get this up. So you suggested in the presenter mode, and I don't see that. So maybe you could advise me that and I'll finish with my last slide. Yeah, Jody, if you, if you can share your screen and get it get it up. So it should, there's a little checkbox that's marked that says presenter view. So if you open, if you open that up, like full screen it, and then actually hit, um, see right there, right, right below, right below your cursor, it says use presenter view. If you uncheck that and you open up the presentation again, the notes slide, or that thing on the side with the notes should go away. So now you'd hit from current slide. How's that? Better? That's it. <laughs> it takes a village, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So yeah, so my last slide, um, I think we all have plenty to do. There seems to be uh, many opportunities and challenges in front of us. Um, I saw this yesterday and thought, who has time to count the holes in a strainer? But um, day 12 of quarantine. <laughs> um, I appreciate all of you being on here and sharing your resources. Um, it's so important that we continue to do this as every day changes. Um, you're doing great work out there, and um, it certainly takes um, takes all of us to contribute, and I appreciate all of the contributions you've made. So Sonia posted, um, if you want to add the links in the chat to the resource page, I can post too. So I can, um, I think, is everyone able to access those? I think Marie posted that. And I see Scott Holdman also posted a document, uh, foundation, oh. the link is of foundation responses. So uh, something else that came up as well as Dr. Johnson posted his from Kansas State. Great. Yeah, thank you everyone for um, just putting up the growing paint here. We're trying to figure all these platforms out as well. Um, we'll try to do this again, maybe in a couple of weeks, <clears throat> I'm sure. As every day changes, um, new things will come online and they'll, we'll have some, I'm confident we'll have more success stories to share. So um, 
Any final comments? Anybody else have anything else to share before we sign off for the day? Appreciate all of you that were willing to share resources and what's happening in your communities. Jody, just yes, a, a final thought, and I share mm -hmm. this always with the rural leadership uh, folks, is about our own self-talk and how we have to be aware of that because that will help us move forward or sometimes it'll bring us back. That's right. <laughs> so Excellent. always be aware of what's going on in our head because that's where it all starts. And yeah, for sure. Try to have that more, be more positive. Yeah, I appreciate that. And know that we'll continue to work on online resources. We're trying to put together uh, our lead local program as an online platform. So maybe we can reach communities that way. And I know all of you are equipped to handle this. Um, you're leaders in your own communities. And if we can help, I hope you'll reach out and access the resources that we've included here. Um, we will put together that link to access this and you're, I will email that out and you're welcome to share that with others. So with that, um, we're approaching 1030. If there are no other comments, Jody, um, I, I, see, I see that Megan yeah. has, or Megan's asked about recording and it is being recorded. So yes, maybe we can put that somewhere on the website too or wherever, but it is being recorded. Yeah, great. And we will share that. Thank you everyone for your participation. We wish you the very best in the coming weeks as we deal with the changing situation. We'll keep the resources coming and appreciate all your input. Thank you, everyone.